Guys, I am so excited to be doing this video ever since I started YouTube, which really wasn't that long ago. I have been dying to do a tier list. I consume tier list media like none other. I love watching horror movie tier lists, other movie tier lists, book tier lists, reality, TV tier lists, gossip tier lists, everything. Every, makeup tier list. I just am obsessed with tier lists. So I have been dying, dying to do a tier list. And I'm so excited to do one, but it is December. I read a ton of mystery thrillers during December. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite genres, especially during this winter time. I just love curling up with a blanket and a good thriller and just like reading through it. So I am so excited. We're going to be doing all of the thrillers and mysteries that I've ever read. It's not like that many because I really didn't get, any th get into thrillers and mysteries until a couple years ago, actually. I mostly read before that young adult fantasy, like a ton of young adult fantasy, so much young adult fantasy that um, I just, I didn't have time to read anything else. So what really got me started reading mysteries and thrillers was Oh, what was the book? I think it was The Woman in Cabin 10. I think it's on this list. It wasn't like the best, but I was like, oh, this is actually like pretty interesting. So I started reading more and more and more. And then there's one book, it's on this list that I read that I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I love this genre. And it kind of just took off from there. So most of these books are actually from the past two to three years. So a lot of them are, you're going to recognize because they're just newer books. But I'm excited. I've read a decent amount in my opinion. Not for other people who've been in a thrillers and mysteries for a very long time, but I had a fun time reading them. Anyway, let's go through my categories. They're pretty basic um, because this is my first one. I haven't gotten like super creative with them, but at the top is lives rent free in my mind. Some of these, most of them are going to be five stars. Some of them are going to be four. Like to me, they weren't there, but they are stuck in my brain still. Like there's something in the story that didn't make them a five, but the rest of the story was like, oh my gosh. I'm not sure though. I, I put these in a while ago. Really, really, really great books. These are just some of my favorite books. A lot of four stars are going to be in here. Maybe a couple of threes just depends. Uh, I actually don't know the ratings I gave to most of these books. I'm kind of going in blind and using what I remember as a basis for this because what you rate a book at the time can definitely be different than how you feel about it now. So I'm going to base it off of how I'm feeling about it now. I may not remember you, but I had a good time books that were fine. They were really fun. I had a great time with them. Don't remember like most of the plot or if I do, they were still just a good time. They weren't something I'd be like, oh, I wish I could like read this over again and not remember what happened. No, these are going to be had a great time when I read it. That's it. Uh, oh, you were almost there. Yeah, that's definitely I feel like obvious. It's going to be a lot of two stars. It's going to be books that had moments in it that were like good, but if they had pushed it a certain way, it would have been really good. Last one is get this away from me immediately. There's going to be DNFs, one stars, books I just generally hated that I read. So we are going to jump right into it with our first book, which is All Good People Here. We are not starting off well. Uh, I am putting out a Goodreads thing at some point and I read that in that vlog. So yeah, get this away from me immediately. <laughs> I hated this book. I really didn't like it. I mostly hated it because it was like a John Benet Ramsey ripoff and I really really didn't like the end of it. So that's I <laughs> it went from a three to a one instantly. That's how much I didn't like the ending. Night Shift. Uh, you were almost there. I again this is a book that was pretty good. It started off a little boring. Two of the perspectives were quite boring. One of them was actually really really good. But the longer the book went on, the better it went until the end. It was just so depressing. I don't read thrillers and mysteries to like read something horribly depressing. I read something to be, these to be entertained. These are my entertaining books. So for me, The Night Shift, it had a lot of potential, but it just fell short because it was so depressing. The next one is Pretty Little Wife. Oh, I don't know... I think, mm, so this one I get confused with another one, but this is the one I think I like more. I don't remember if it's this one. <laughs> I don't remember if it's this one. Okay, no, that is not it. That is not it. This one definitely 
goes here because I could not remember the plot. I really did enjoy it at the time and I remember enjoying it, but I barely can remember the plot. I had to look it up to remember the plot. But the other one on this, they're very similar. They're both domestic thrillers. The main characters are very similar. Uh, everything is very similar. The cover is very similar. So I always get them confused, but it's always the other book that I'm trying to say both books are. So that one, that one will probably go a little higher. Anyway, Killers of a Certain Age. Get this away from me. Get this away from me. I... I really hated this. I really, I, it, to me, it was not, I was expecting this really funny book that had like badass old people being assassins. And I just didn't feel that. I didn't feel that. I didn't find it exciting. I just, I really, really didn't like this book. The next one is The Appeal. I'm torn because <laughs> I feel like this had a lot of potential, but it was so boring. This is probably one of the most boring books I've ever read. So I feel like it has to go get this away from me. And it was one of my most anticipated reads of the year that it came out. I feel like it has to be in that last category because it made me so angry. But I guess it didn't make me super angry. I feel like, we'll put it in, you were almost there. It had moments it could have been really good if it was written differently or by a different author I feel like it could have been really really good but because of how it was executed it's gonna go into you were almost there I'm not gonna talk about this one anymore I feel like everyone knows my opinion on it I hate this book I yeah that's all I'm gonna say about it why are all the bad ones first I feel like <laughs> this was like unintentional I really didn't do this on purpose but it's all the bad ones are first so uh, let me move these around for a minute because <laughs> anyway oh my god they really are all first book of cold cases you were almost there this had so much potential I feel like it should have just leaned into being a horror instead of a thriller the horror parts are actually really good the rest of it was boring dull couldn't stand it thought it was kind of confusing at the end Next one is Daisy Darker. I have a whole review for this one. Get it away from me. I hated the ending of this one. Hated it so much. This is one of my least favorite books of the year. I was, and I was wildly disappointed because this is one of my most anticipated books of the year. Like the appeal was. Mm, mm. Next one is Runtime. You're almost there. It was almost there. It had so much potential. It's mixed media. I feel like it just needed more guidance like it felt like it like meandered and it didn't really have a point like book really felt like it didn't have a point and it was confused what it was trying to do so this one could have been better oh the butcher and the wren this is also a big disappointment for me because i love the podcast morbid and this to me was just not it was in, it's a debut novel so my hope is because i know this is a series my hope is that they get better but the first one was just very lackluster. It had some moments that were like, oh, this is pretty good. But the writing was really rough. It was very analytical instead of more flowing. And I think that's just gonna like with practice and time that'll get better. The Housemaid. I, I remember everything in this because it was it was wild. Like it was it was absolutely wild. But at the same time. <laughs> I feel like it's not a great book. It's not a great book. It's a good time. And I feel like I'm not going to remember it over time. So I'm going to put it in. I may not remember you, but I had a good time. Good time because I did. I had a really good time with this book. And I definitely want to read the next one that's coming out, even though it doesn't have, I don't think it has anything to do with this first book. Queen of Tiles. Another one that was almost there. I always have issues with the young adult mystery thriller because... I always feel like there's something missing in them. There's not enough stakes. There's not enough going on. And that's kind of what I felt about this book. It just wasn't entertaining enough. Like there wasn't enough going on and I didn't really love the ending either. Things we do in the dark. I feel like that's definitely got to go in the, I'm not going to remember this. Like I know I'm not going to remember this, but I had a pretty good time reading it. Like I, I really did have a good time reading it. Oh, we are finally, we are finally getting to some good books. The Mary Shelley Club. I know I just said I have issues with young adult thrillers and mysteries, but this one was so good. And this had slasher vibes. Like this is bordering on horror. It's bordering. But because of the underlying mystery and thriller content in it, you can kind of slide it back into this category. 
it's a toss-up. It's kind of how I feel about the next book as well, but it's a toss-up. I'm going to include it in this even though it could go horror. Just kind of depends who you're talking to. I really enjoyed this book. I really, really did enjoy this. I remember everything that happened in it. I had a I had such a fantastic time reading this. I read this, I think, the month before October, and I was so sad because I felt like I should have read it for Halloween because it is the classic Halloween slasher book. Next one is Hidden Pictures. This, again, uh, could be considered a horror, and it is in Goodreads. I don't think it is. Like, there's some supernatural aspects, but if you feel that way, then all of what's her name Simone St. James books is would be horrors this to me is not horror it is more thriller mystery going on with some aspects of horror but anyway I digress people can have their own opinions I this lives rent free in my mind I loved this book I thought this book was so clever I loved the pictures and there's actual pictures in it and it was just so good it was so good it was so fantastic this is one that's gonna like live in infamy for thrillers for me. Breathless. Um, I'm a torn where to put this. I gave this four because I do think it was a little ridiculous at times, but I really loved this book. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about my ratings, but this one kind of, this one does live rent free in my mind. So I think I've got to put it here. It's not a five star. It's what I talked about. They're not all going to be five stars, but this one this one just lives in my brain. It just lives in my brain and I will always tell people to read it. And I love Everest kind of stuff going on. And it it really, what pushed it over was reading the author's bio is they were climbing, the, the mountain that they climbed in the book, she actually climbed in real life. She was like the youngest for someone from her country that did it. And it was so cool. And I love that because it felt so real. Like it felt like a real... Like she knew what she was talking about when she was writing it, which I loved. So that, I, I, that's gotta live rent free in my mind. I may change it later, but I don't think so. I think that's gonna stay up there. The Paris Apartment, and this is gonna do a little flop. It's a really, really good book. Again, a little ridiculous. And I gave it a five star, but I don't know if I'll remember it. Like I don't, I don't know if long term I'm gonna remember it. And the rest of the book was not, I rated it a five star because I loved the ending. I loved the ending. It was very different than a normal thriller ending. So I'd been reading a ton of thrillers. And when I read this and the ending was different, I was like, five star, <laughs> five star, because it got me out of a reading thriller, th a reading thriller slump. So I think this one has got to go in a really, really great books because I don't know if I'll remember it eventually. The Verifiers. <sighs> This is going and you're almost there. Oh, and by the way, I read a lot of, I don't know if I said this, I read a lot of cozy mysteries. None of those are going to be included in these. So that's why you're not seeing any cozy mysteries because they're, to me, there's a whole, they're a whole separate thing. Anyway, the verifiers. Yeah, I just found it boring. <laughs> I cannot tell you what happened in it. Yeah, that's really all I got to say, but I thought it was boring. I thought I could have done a little more. I felt like I should have leaned either more cozy mystery or more thriller it just felt like it was stuck in this in between like it didn't know what it wanted to be so I just wasn't that entertained and I the comedy fell flat it was supposed to be funny but the comedy in it just it didn't hit right next one real easy I enjoyed this book I would put this in a, I may not remember you because I, I don't remember a lot in this one but I did have a really good time reading it. I, I really could not tell you what happened in this book, but I remember enjoying it okay. We Were Never Here, again, goes, I may not remember you, but I had a good time. I had a great time reading this one. I'm not going to remember it with all the other thrillers out there. Ugh, Reckless Girls. I will have to put this one here. You were almost there. I feel like I enjoyed this book most of the time, but other times I was rolling my eyes. I have... I have an issue with the Rachel Hawkins uh, and oh, what's her other name? She has another name. I don't know if this is her pen name or the other one's her pen name. I love her romance books, The X Hex and The Kiss Curse. Love those two books. Her two horror thriller mysteries, hate them. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with that, but it's a thing that's happening. And anyway, this one was almost there. I really did almost enjoy this one, but it just... I just didn't love it because I, 
I don't have to love a character, but I just really hated everybody on this damn island. <laughs> I really hated everybody on this island and I just wanted them all to go away, pretty much. And I just, I, again, I didn't like the ending for this one. Okay, next one is Prom House. It's not a good book. It's not a good book, but I enjoyed myself. It was a ridiculous young adult, like 200 page prom slasher. It was ridiculous, but I had a really good time reading it. The Maid, oh no. Okay, some of these are gonna have uh, repeats apparently. Oh well, so we're just gonna skip that one. A Flicker in the Dark is gonna have to go into really, really, really great books. And I think it goes there because I'm starting to forget what happened in it. And I don't know, I'm sad about that, but it's, it's one of those books that's very slow, very, uh, draws everything out so it's really great when you're reading it but now I'm like shoot was that in this book or was that in another book so I'm getting confused but I remember it being a really really good book so I'm gonna have to go back through I'm sure like when I read like the synopsis I'm gonna be like oh yeah, oh yeah. okay uh The Neighbor's Secret I don't remember that much about it but I remember having a good time so it goes there too The Family Game Get It Away From Me I literally don't want to see this book ever again uh this is hopefully the last time i ever have to see it in a video <laughs> because i'm sick of talking about it i have a whole review out for this one i hated this book there was something in it that i was just like absolutely not i didn't like it okay next one is rock paper scissors i really enjoyed this one i remember everything that happened in it and i remember the vibes the vibes were so good so i enjoyed this one a lot uh survive the night by riley sager guys please don't hate me please don't hate me it's not going in the top category but it is going here I really liked it I feel like I'm in such a minority saying I liked this book and I'm sorry but I really did like it I'm sorry okay moving on before I get yelled at the last time I lied yeah it's gotta go there that ending was it was so good. It was so good. Love the ending. The rest of the book was like, okay, but the ending was so good. I, my jaw was like on the floor. I was in shock. I read it over Christmas, I think. Loved it. Next one is Every Value Break. This is going to be another one. This is a, I think this is Peter Swanson. I am sorry, but it's going in really, really, really great book. I enjoyed this, even though again, it's another ridiculous book. I think I just like ridiculous books. I really liked it. I know a lot of people did not, and I'm sorry, but I really did enjoy it. Next one is Shiver. So this is kind of like one one by one's like ripoff. It got really boring, but I also enjoyed it at the same time. So I don't think I'm going to enjoy this one. I'm probably going to, or I don't think I'm going to remember this one. I'm going to be thinking of one by one instead, because that's what I remember. They are very similar. I think I read them right after the other, and it was, they were so similar. So Shiver goes here. I had a good time reading it, but I'm not going to remember it. When the Stars Go Dark. That one was so good. Really, really, really good book. That's It follows along the same lines as A Flicker in the Dark. It feels very true crimey, and it's like a long, drawn-out uh, crime story. So I really enjoyed those. Whew. This next one. This, <laughs> this next one. I will never read this author ever again because of how much I hated this. This is a get this away from me immediately. I I threw this book across the room. I hated it so much. The ending was absolutely absurd. Absurd, depressing, just miserable. And it was stupid. I hated this book. I'm sorry if you loved it. I am so sorry, but I hated this book. <laughs> Next one is Such a Quiet Place. Hmm... I don't know if I'll remember this one long term, but I feel like for now it's going in really, really great books. I actually ended up really liking this one. I feel like, uh, what is her name? Megan Miranda is not everyone's favorite. She's one of those authors that just pumps out books. So uh, some of them are really good. Some of them are eh. I really like this one. It was actually something my mom bought because she thought I would like it. So I thought it was really good. Pretty as a picture. A lot of people don't know this book, but... It lives rent-free in my brain. I loved this book. I thought it was so cool. It takes place on a movie set. 
and you're following a uh, produ I think she's like a videographer or producer for this thing. So, or an editor, she's like some sort of video editor. And so she, I just, I love it. I love it. I actually really, really love that book. I know a lot of people did not. It does not have like the best ratings, but I thought it was really fantastic. No exit. I feel like it won't be any surprise that this is going in. Liz rent free in my mind. Not the Hulu thing. I only watched about 10 minutes of that Hulu adaptation and turned it off. But No Exit had one of my favorite moments in a book. I have never wanted to, like, I, oh no, I did. I legitimately was screaming out loud while reading this book because I was so stressed. I was so stressed at, like, the beginning to, like, the middle of this book that I was just, like, shaking. And I'm pretty sure I stayed up all night to finish reading it, which is not something I do very often because I always feel like crap in the morning. But I, yeah, I definitely read the whole thing in one night and absolutely loved it. One by One by Ruth Ware is going to be going in really, really, really great books. And I feel like this is another one that people are going to totally disagree with me. But I loved this book. I thought it was really good. I thought it was very obvious who did the stuff. But I was wildly entertained while reading it. In my Goodreads thing, I talk about It Girl by Ruth Ware. And it has the same exact vibes to it because it's it's you know basically what's going to happen at the end there's no real big surprises but you enjoy the ride and I feel like it's impressive when you have an author who can write a really entertaining book even though the ending is obvious the wife upstairs this is the other Rachel Hawkins it is a get away with get away from me I was so mad at this book and it's a very specific reason I don't think it was particularly written poorly. I don't think the plot was done poorly. I love Jane Eyre. <laughs> if you love Jane Eyre, I would not suggest this book because literally at the end of the book, I mean, she it's, it's a retelling or reimagining of Jane Eyre, which normally means it's like a love letter to Jane Eyre. It's people who love the books. No, at the very, very end of the book, she goes, I hated that book. This is actually what I feel about the book and all the characters. And I was like, <laughs> so for me, it was a personal attack on my favorite classic. And so it is a get this away from me. It's impressive that I read the second book. Uh, I wanted to give her a second chance in my reading, but I also didn't like that one. So I'll probably pick up one more, one more to see what happens. But other than that, oof. Okay, lock every door. I'm sorry. I know this is everyone's favorite uh, besides Home Before Dark, but I know this is everyone's favorite. I thought it was so stupid. It's the only Riley Sager book that I don't like and I just thought it was so weird. I thought it was so weird. That ending was just like, what? This should have been something I loved. I loved locked room books, but that ending was so absurd that I was just over it. It was just so over it. The Wife Between Us, pretty much all, what is it, Greer Hendricks and uh, the other, Peck, Sarah Pekinen, I think that's who these wrote these, the same person as The Golden Couple, are going to be in, I may not remember you, but I had a good time. I've read most of their books, had a great time reading them, don't remember a single thing that happened. Agatha Christie, Five Little Pigs, I actually really liked this Agatha Christie book. I don't remember a lot that happens in it, but I had a great time reading it and I actually read it as a, a buddy read with my husband. <laughs> so we set goals and read them. So it was really fun. Good night, beautiful. Hmm. This is a hard one for me because I have mixed feelings about it. This is definitely a book also you have to read physically, unless obviously you can't, uh, be, or it ruins the surprise like it actually legitimately ruins the book if you listen to the audiobook so if you are able you should read it physically but it's it's like what is the re it's a retelling of something I don't remember it was almost there it was almost there it had so much potential but it just wasn't enough like there needed to be a little bit more someone inside your house eh you were almost there. It was, it was fine. It was fine. There's other thrillers that are way more entertaining. That This one was just fine. It was fine. The Silent Patient. Again, no surprise to anybody. Yeah, this lives rent-free in my mind. It's, this is such a good book. 
it's such a good book. Uh, I feel like a lot of people either really love this book or are feral for it or really hated it because it, 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 it did have a twist that some people were like, mm, but I loved it. I was shocked. I was shocked. I gasped when I read this. <laughs> You're invited. I would say I had a really great time reading this. I don't think I'm going to remember it long term. Same thing for an anonymous girl. This is also one of the Greer Hendrix, Sarah Peckinen books. If I'm saying them wrong, I'm sorry. That I'm just, I loved it, but I'm not going to remember it. The Night Swim. Rent Free. Rent Free. Loved this book. Had multiple people read it because I loved it so much. I, I cannot get enough of this book. It was so entertaining. One of the best books I've seen to use the podcast like theme. A lot of books are coming out where the main character is a podcaster and they're following a case. This is one of the best books that has done it. It was so good. The Escape Room by the same author as The Night Swim. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I need to pick up the third Stay Awake to see if which side of this I'm on because The Night Swim was Liz Rent Free in my mind, one of my favorite books I've read in years. Uh, and then the escape room, I DNF, get it away from me. It was so boring. It was so boring. I made through, I got through half the book and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I don't know what happened. I can't do this anymore. So I got to pick up the next one, stay awake to see which line I fall more on. I'm scared though. The Hunting Party by L L Lucy Foley. I don't know why I was kind of called her Lisa. Uh, I had a great time reading this. Not going to really remember much of it. The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. I know I said that sad books are not something I go into wanting to, I, I don't go into wanting my thrillers and mysteries to be sad, but The Broken Girls was, so, the, like the writing was so magical. Everything was so magical. I loved the book so much. And this is one of those books that I wish I could reread. Like I could like wipe that little specific memory and just reread it over and over and over again. It was so good. The Whisper Man. Mm, I did not have a good time reading this one. That's going in. You're almost there. I feel like it had a lot of potential, but I don't remember a single thing that happened. And I know that I don't, I don't think I liked the main character and I don't think I really liked the plot line either. So A Good Marriage. This is the one that was a really good book. That's the one I keep trying to say Pretty Little Wife is. Really liked this one. Loved the lawyer uh aspect of she's got something from her past and the person she's trying to help has something going on with him currently so I really like that it felt like an episode of Law and Order or an episode of Criminal Minds it just felt like an episode of that in a book form and it was so good Home Before Dark no surprise it lives rent free in my mind I absolutely love it Final Girls Riley Sager Liz Rent Free in my mind. I absolutely loved it. I adored this book. Uh, it's actually the book that really set off my love for thrillers. So I know this is not everyone's favorite, but I really liked it. The Last Flight. <sighs> it's kind of how I feel about all of Julie Clark's books. They're almost there. There's just something I don't like about them that I feel is just like kind of lackluster in the books. I just am not entertained. I'm bored most of the time. But there's moments of like genius that could push it up, but it's just not there. And that's how I feel about the other one too. Uh, the Island. I may not remember you, but I had a good time. I had a great time reading this book. It is not something I would normally read. It's kind of gruesome at parts and it's, it's a, it's a, what is it called? It's like a chase scene, the whole book. And it's not something I normally like, but it was wildly entertaining. One of Us, we'll do One of Us is Lying First, which I actually really liked. I thought it was a really good book. The twist in it was fantastic. I had a great time with that. One of Us is Next, I enjoyed, but I'm probably not, I don't remember it. I don't remember it. It just isn't sticking in my brain like the first one did. The Sundown Motel has got to go in really, really great books. It's not as good as The Broken Girls, but it was fantastic. It was really fun. It just didn't have that emotional impact that Broken Girls had that made it one step up. The Guest List. Oh man, I'm putting that in really, really great books. Even though it was absolutely ridiculous, I'm putting it in really great books because I had a fun time with it. I had such a fun time with it, even if it was a little absurd. 
Next one is All Our Twisted Secrets. I actually remember what happened in this, but I didn't love it. So it's going and you were almost there because it was. I didn't love the ending of it. I thought it had some really intriguing plot lines and I actually didn't see the ending coming really. So that's impressive, but I, I still don't really love how it ended. So if you make a few tweaks, yeah. Uh, two can keep a secret. I don't remember a single thing that happened other than I'm pretty sure I enjoyed it. <laughs> that's, that's all I've got for that one. The next one is Tana French in the Woods. So this one is going up into Lives Rent Free in my mind. The reason it goes up there is because uh, it's not a five. It's not a five. But the ending was so... I was shocked at the ending of the mystery. And I was also shocked what... Tana French did with the story in general. So it just lives in my head. I'm obsessed with it. I don't think it's like the best. It definitely dragged and uh, it could have been shorter, but but it lives in my head. It will live in my head for forever, <laughs> for forever, because it was so wild at some parts. Next, we're getting close to it. The Girl on the Train I, no, actually, that goes in a really, really good book. I remember everything that happened in this. No, not the movie. The actual book is really good. It was shocking. It was really entertaining. And I had a great time reading it. <laughs> Stalking Jack the Ripper. I was unsure about this one, but they're all mysteries. So I'm like, what exactly is this? So I just included it just in case someone says, hey, you missed this and I know you read it. It lives rent-free in my mind. I'm sorry. It does. I love this whole series. I don't care. It's a guilty pleasure for me. I love it. So, I'm sorry. I know it, I feel like it doesn't belong in this video, but it's here. Next is Woman in Cabin 10. This is actually one of the first real thriller mysteries that I read. I don't remember a lot that happened in it, but I had a great time reading it. And I remember, like, the twist being like, oh, this is really good. So, we're going to go with that. The Counselors. This one is a surprise. Uh, I actually love this book. A lot of people did not like it. I thought it was very solid. had a great plot. I had a great time watching this. Or yeah, watching this one. I had a great time reading this one. I feel like The Counselors would make a really good, like, not ABC, but ABC Family Show. Is it, What is it now? Freeform? Freeform Show or like even like an HBO thing. It reminded me a lot of Pretty Little Liars a little bit. Don't go into it thinking it's Pretty Little It's not. It's not Pretty Little Liars. Don't read it because I said that. <laughs> the Woman in the Window. Had a great time reading it. Don't remember anything that happened. The Hunting Wives. This one I was debating putting on here because it's more... My stomach's growling if you hear that. Uh, it's more fiction, I feel like. But at the same time, there is like a thriller aspect to it. And I... It was a DNF. I hated this book. Firstborn, I hate twin stories, hate them. I, I don't know why I tried reading this. I really hated it. And then there were none by Agatha Christie. To no surprise, it lives rent free in my brain. It's amazing. It is such a good book. That ending had me shocked. It was so good. So that's gotta go up there. Before I go to sleep, this was another one I read pretty early. I really enjoyed reading this one and it gave me major anxiety, but I don't remember a lot. The reason I remember this one is because of the Nicole Kidman movie, which is really good, by the way. It's a lot different, but it was really good. None Shall Sleep. This was a great book. I had such a fun time reading this. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did, but I did. <laughs> the House Across the Lake. I'm sorry. It does live rent free in my head. It does. It just does because the twist was so absurd and I, for some reason, loved it. <laughs> I loved every second of this book. I did give it a four because I did not think it was as good as other Riley Sager books, uh, but that's gonna live in my little noggin for forever. <laughs> the Sanatorium. I had a good time reading this. I thought it was fun. I picked up the next book. I still have to read The Retreat. I have not gotten to it yet. The Lies I Tell, this is the other Julie Clark book. It goes in You Were Almost There. It's the same way I felt about it. I really didn't feel like it was a thriller or a, I don't, it was weird. I, I don't know. I don't know how I felt about it. That was weird. It was almost there. Uh, and our last one, 
because I have a double of the maid. Let me just stick that here. Because I feel like it's going to bother people. And no matter where it goes, it's going to bother people. The Golden Couple. <sighs> it's another Greer Hendrix and Sarah Pekkanen, but it's the most recent I've read. And I, like I said, I really love their books. I just don't remember them after a while. So it's going to go in really, really great books because currently I remember everything that happened in it. <laughs> And I had a great time. I read it very quickly. I really had a great time reading this. So that is my tier ranking. I don't think I'm gonna move anything. I think I'm gonna stick with what I what I've done. Mm, you know, what? I'm gonna move prom house down here. Yeah, I feel better about that. Otherwise, yeah, this is definitely my ranking. I'm happy with everything. I feel like Breathless could go down one, but. Ugh, yeah, I'll put Breathless down by one. I always second guess myself on these things. That's why I don't re-go over my tests. When I was in school, I would finish my test and I would leave. I was always the first person that was done because I never went over my answers because I would always change them and they would be wrong if I changed them. So don't go over your answers. Don't follow my advice. <laughs> Just don't. Just ignore me. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with my tier rankings. This was so much fun. Okay, <laughs> I'm like so excited that I did this. That was so much fun. Uh, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you. If you made it to the end, leave a little, leave a knife emoji. I don't know if YouTube's gonna like that, but leave a, leave a knife emoji and let me know what you guys thought. Uh, let me know what books you liked, what was going on, etc. You know, the usual stuff. It's the usual stuff. But uh, thank you for watching this video because I really enjoyed doing this and I've been wanting to do it for a while. So that's all I've got for you guys. Make sure you subscribe, like I said, for hopefully more tier rankings. I'm really excited about that. Uh, they're kind of a pain to set up, but it's not that bad. And make sure you like the video and make sure you leave a comment down below. And make sure you let me know what books that you liked, what books that you didn't like, where you would have changed stuff. Maybe if I uh, put any in here you don't think should have been actually put in this tier list like Stalking Jack the Ripper. Uh, but that's all I got for you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video.